Hello, my name is Jonathan Mitchell and this is the second of my videos on improving your smartphone photography. So in the first video we talked about techniques and skills to help you develop a bit of a photographic eye and to really start using your smartphone camera as a, a way of looking at the world in a new way, in a creative way, in, in a way that would enable you to see things differently and to capture that vision. Uh, we're going to move on from that in this video and we're going to talk about what to do with the images when you've already taken them. So editing basically. Now I'm sure you realize there are a huge number of apps out there uh, that enable you to do just that. Uh, they're all slightly different, they all focus on different areas, they all have their strengths and their limitations. Um, and it's really just a case of downloading a few, most of them are free. Uh, those that do have uh, a charge is often quite small. So um, it's really just a case of downloading a few and having a play about and you'll very quickly uh, come to find which ones suit you and, and what you're trying to achieve and which ones you like. Um, the interface will appeal to people on one app, whereas a different app will appeal to somebody else. So, you know, there's loads of stuff out there that you can play with. Even the expensive ones tend to have a free trial that you can download and, and have a little play first and, and see if uh, it's giving you what you're looking for. So today I'm going to be working with two different apps. Uh, the first one is one called Photograph with an F. I'm just going to put up a, a little screenshot of the icon there so if you're looking for this app you know what to find. So there it is there, photograph with an F. Um, now this is an iPhone specific app so if you're not using an iPhone you won't be able to get this app. But there are lots of very similar apps that, that you'll be able to find with a quick Google search. Uh, this one is for free on the uh, iPhone store and I've been using this for years now. Uh, there's loads of much newer apps but I find this one is still very, very good. I use it for a lot of my uh, colour and contrast reworking on images. Uh, it's a very intuitive, simple interface and most importantly uh, it retains a really high quality of the images. It doesn't degrade the images when you work on them. Uh, so I, I, this is my go-to app um, and I use it a lot so that's one we're going to be using quite a lot in this video and the second app that we're going to be using is one called Snapseed so I'm going to stick up a little um, a little picture of the icon there unfortunately it doesn't have the name on but it's the word snap and the word seed uh, all in one word now this is a Google app um, so it's available on the Google Play Store, but it's also available on the, uh, on the Apple Store. So pretty much whatever platform you're working with, you should be able to, to get a copy of this app. It's also free and it has some great, uh, quite powerful tools for cropping and um, uh, correcting perspective issues. So I use it quite a lot for those things. So, as I say, there's a world of apps out there, all the way from the simplest, uh, like Instagram, uh, all the way through to Adobe Photoshop, which is a professional level tool that enables you to do just about anything, um, and, uh, and everything in between. So really get out there, have a look on your app stores, do a little Google search, try a few things out. Uh, these are the two that I'm going to be working with today. What I'm specifically going to be concentrating on is, is manual control over um, your image because a lot of the apps you look at, they're full of filters. Now filters are great, you click on a button and you might get a, a vintage look or a colour wash over it or it'll switch it into black and white for you, but filters are pre-programmed. You don't really have much control over the intensity of the filter, over um, how strong the contrast is or how bright the color is. So what we're going to be talking about today is manual control because I really want you to be able to get used to understanding how these different techniques work and the impact they have on your image so that, uh, so that you start to find a way 
to apply the effects that you actually want rather than the ones that the app is giving you. Okay, so let's talk about what we're actually going to do. That's a bit about the technology. We're going to concentrate on four main areas of editing today. So the first one we're going to talk about is cropping. Um, when you crop into an image. You can use cropping for all sorts of things, for cutting out an unnecessary bit of the picture that you couldn't avoid including when you took the shot. You can use a crop to really change the feel uh, of an image, which we talked about a little bit in, in the first video that I posted. Um, and also included within the, the sort of field of cropping is, is things like perspective uh, correction because uh, quite often with a smartphone you're going to be using a wide angle lens, you might be tilting it off the vertical or off the horizontal and, uh, and that can lead to perspective errors. So there are ways of, of correcting those as well. So we'll deal a little bit with that. Uh, we're going to talk about light exposure, which is how much light is in your photograph. So sometimes you might find uh, there just wasn't enough light available and your image is darker than you'd like it to be. Or oh, there was too much light and it's too bright. So exposure is a way of reining that in a little bit and regaining a bit of control post taking the photograph so that you can then brighten it up a little or darken it down. Um, uh, and that's going to really give you some control over that light. Um, we're also going to talk about uh, contrast. Uh, and levels. These are things photographers know as curves. So we're really dealing here with specific areas. Exposure is a global um, uh, adjustment. So basically it will affect the whole photograph. So if you brighten it up, everything gets brighter. If you darken it down, everything gets darker. Whereas with contrast, you're working more closely. So you can brighten up the highlights or darken down the shadows without affecting the other parts of the photograph. So we're going to have a little look at that. And then the final thing we're going to concentrate on is color. So the intensity or what we call the saturation of the color, making that brighter or more uh, lighter. Um, also the temperature uh, of the color because light, all light has a temperature. Sunlight is a different temperature to fluorescent light, say. LED lights and these things will, these different types of light will affect the colors in your image because um, your smartphone camera is not very sophisticated by and large at adapting to these different temperatures of light. So you can actually work in the apps afterwards and change that uh, tone and color of the light to one that you feel suits the image better. And we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, getting rid of colour altogether and going black and white. A lot of people like black and white photography. Um, and so we're going to look at um, uh, simple, clear ways to manually have complete control over that. Okay, so let's start with our first thing we were talking about, which is cropping. So I'm going to put a little video up now of an image that I cropped. Uh, and this is on the, the uh, Snapseed app. So um, we're just going to have a little look as an example as to what kind of impact a crop can have on your photograph. Okay, so I'm going to put the video up now. Um, we, uh, we open up the app there and we're going to bring up a photograph of a man sitting down in front of some graffiti on a board. And what we're going to do is when we get the image up, here it comes. There it is, and you see the little pen icon on the right hand side, you click on that and that'll give you your toolbox, and you see the crop icon on the left, we click on that, it gives us a little box, so you can pull in these lines uh, and move the little box around until you're happy with where your crop is, and once you're happy you just click on the little tick, and that will crop your image according to how you have positioned those lines. So there we are, there's the finished crop. Now I'm just going to show you how the two differ. All we've done here is crop in on the image. Here's the original where you can see the man and the graffiti in the background and it has a certain sense the graffiti almost looks like it's 
It's watching over him. He's he's in a sort of fighting stance, but it doesn't look aggressive. It's almost protective. Uh, but when we crop in, uh, here's the second image, and we take that part, that element out of the photograph, and we're just left with the man, it's got a completely different quality, a more reflective, introspective quality, uh, maybe even a little, you know, melancholic. So um, what you can see here already is that a crop can be a very, very powerful tool to change the feel of a photograph. So that's just one example. We're not going to dwell any further on that. Um, but the technique we use there of drawing in the little lines and moving the box around, that's pretty much universal to, to all apps that will offer you um, a cropping option. Uh, so that will um, transfer to pretty much any app. So that's how you did on Snap Speed, but, uh, Snap Seed rather, but uh, it's pretty much the same um, whichever app you use. So that's cropping. Cropping can really dynamically affect your image. What we're going to look at now is in the same family as cropping, but it's a slightly different thing. We're going to talk about perspective distortion. Uh, it's a very common thing when the camera is tilted. So if, for example, you're taking a photograph of a tall building, um, you're going to have to tilt the camera upwards by and large because otherwise you're not going to get the whole thing in frame. But what that does, if you're looking at the building, the lines appear nice and straight. As soon as you tilt the camera, they kind of bend in towards one another and you get this thing called a parallax, um, which is where the lines appear to be converging. And it's okay, it looks grand, but it would be nice to get rid of that. So I'm going to show you on Snap Speed, um, or Snap Seed, I keep calling it Snap Speed, uh, how we can correct that. It's a very simple um, and very clear tool, uh, but it's really, really powerful, and you'll see in the finished results um, just how powerful it is. So I'm going to bring up the little video now. Uh, here we are. So it's a, a view of a pub in London that I took and you can see there very clearly that the lines diverge in towards the centre. We bring up our toolbox and you can see the perspective button there. We click on that. Now we have four options here. Tilt, Rotate, Scale and Free. So we're going to start with the Tilt option. And you can see up and down, side to side. Now a little clue with this is if you've tilted the camera up to take the picture then you want to tilt the photograph down to correct that, you go the opposite way. So I'm just moving my fingers down and you can see that's tilted it back in. But we've still got a little bit of bulging out at the sides. So we're going to go back to that little set of tools and pick the free tool and we can start pulling down the corners and just correcting those little imbalances, those little bulging out bits until we're happy. You see we've got a grid there to work off of. And once you've got it nice and straight, now you'll see what this app does at the edges, it builds in extra pixels. So it, it takes bits of the photograph that were taken out and rebuilds them back in to keep the image rectangular. So we need to crop those away because you can look at the left and right there and it looks a little bit strange. So we're going to go back to our toolbox uh, click on the little pen icon and we're going to go back to our crop and just as we did before we'll bring in our lines from side to side and top to bottom just to get rid of those little extra bits that the app rather unhelpfully added in for us until we're happy we cut those bits out and then again we just tick on the tick, tick symbol when, uh, when we're comfortable with what we've got there and that'll give us our final finished and corrected image. So I'm going to pop them back up on screen now. So here is our original image. And as I say, you can see those lines tilting in towards uh, the sort of perspective point. And now here's the corrected image. And you can see what a difference that is. Now there's a little bit of information that we've lost at the sides. That's fair enough. That wasn't the point of the photograph anyway. The building was what we were after. But it's a really clear difference. A very very strong difference. So 
those are two examples of what we can do in, in the realm of cropping and how that can make a big difference to our, our finished image. Drastic changes uh, that we've made there, just with very, very simple tools. Okay, so we're going to move on from cropping. Uh, excuse me, my voice is a little hoarse there. And we're going to talk now about light, so exposure. Exposure being uh, the amount of light that your lens has captured. So, um, sometimes your image might be too dark, sometimes it might be too light. So, we're going to go with the Photograph app this time. This is my uh, favourite app, as I said, for correcting things like exposure and uh, colour tone and uh, contrast. So I'm going to bring up another little video now. We've got an image of a set of train tracks and it's fairly bright here. So we're going to click on the little sliders icon on the right and you can see there's a whole series of different tools there, highlights and shadows and so on. But your top one is exposure and you can move that slider up or down to brighten or darken the image. So we're just going to move it down until we're happy. You can see there that that's a, a good bit darker. One thing I would caution it with exposure is you don't want to go too bright because when you go too bright you end up with blown out highlights and uh, uh, the human eye doesn't deal very well with highlights. We can handle dark shadows where there's no information but we're not used to a situation where there's so much light that we can't actually see anything. So just be a bit careful about going too bright. So I'm going to show you the two images side by side now. Here's the first one, the original, where we started off. And it's just a bit too bright. There's a little patch of lighter gravel near the centre of the image that is almost blown out, not quite. Uh, and we just all we did was move that exposure slider down to darken things up a little. And here's the result. And you can see there's a lot more detail, a lot more information. The colours are richer and more saturated. And all of that came from just that one simple little exposure tool. Let's look at it the other way around. Let's look at an image that we feel is a bit too dark and we want to brighten it up. So here we are with the same app again with uh, Photograph and this time the image is of a street performer. So we're going to crop this one in to start. So I'm just going to bring that box in a little because there's too much sky there. I'm balancing the thing. So I'm going to click on done because I'm happy with that crop. There we go. So again, we click on the little sliders to the right and there's our exposure button. And you can see we move that up. That brightens it a bit, a little more maybe. Yeah, that's good. And I'm just going to go down here now and just see the shadows I'm just gonna pull those up a little as well because they're a bit dark and we'll bring up the highlights too and there we go so that is a very different image to what we started with very simple just a couple of little clicks there so not only did we raise the global exposure but we also brightened the shadows a little bit and the highlights a little bit so again here's our before and after here's the uh, the starting image that we began with and you can see it's quite dark uh, there's not a lot of uh, um, information there that we can see because um, we've, uh, we've had the light behind the subject and that's kind of darkened everything down and now here's our edited version and you can see what a different it, it, it is you can you can see a lot more information in there, there's more colour, uh, it doesn't look so washed out and our subjects standing out much more clearly. So again, very simple, very clear, easy to do, only takes a couple of seconds and it's made a world of difference um, to, uh, to our image. So that's the basics of exposure, brightening and dark. Okay. Um, and again, if you used a filter for that, it might have brightened it too much from your starting point, darkened it too much. Whereas when you're in control of it yourself like that, it's really about the choices you make, which is essentially what photography is. Photography is a series of extended choices. There are no rights and wrongs. Um, it's very much a question of the vision you're attempting to uh, manifest. 
And when you're working with those manual controls, it's really in your own hands. OK, so let's move on to shadows and highlights. We had a little bit of a look there um, already um, on that last image at shadows and highlights. But we're going to go a little bit more deeply into it now um, with contrasts and curves and so on. So let's have a look at our next video which is um, this one here. So I'm just going to bring it up for you. There you go. So it's a street scene of a, an alleyway covered in graffiti. Now, you can see there are two figures there. Well, I'm going to crop it in again first, actually, because there's a bit of unsightly litter in the foreground. Uh, get that crop. But you can see the two figures in the doorways, one on the right, one on the left. And your man on the right is quite shadowed. I like the fact they're both facing away from camera. So let's go to our sliders. And we're going to start off here. We are going to scroll down until we find our shadows. And we're going to bring those shadows up a bit. So you can already see more detail emerging in that doorway where the man is. And we're going to bring the highlights up because there's some lovely light areas in the graffiti that we really want to pop. And then we're going to go to our contrast button. Now contrast will simultaneously brighten the brights and darken the darks. So we've already done that to a degree with our shadows and, and highlights, but we're just going to increase that a little bit with the con contrast button. And then I'm going to throw in, you see the saturation, that's the strength of the colours. The more saturated, the brighter the colours, and there's some beautiful colours in there, so we really want to make those pop. So we're going to push that contrast up, and that gives us, again, a real shift from where we originally began. So here's the original image that we started with, and it's nice enough, um, but those colours are not singing. It was a bit of an overcast day when, when I shot. There wasn't any bright sunlight, and even if there had been, we were in an alleyway, so we might not have got that sunlight in there. But we've managed to really bring those colours out and make them pop. Um, excuse me. Here's the original, and that original, as I say, is... Uh, is nice but it's a bit flat and then here's the one we've worked on again just a few simple tweaks of a slider and the image really comes alive you've really got some crispness and some brightness and those gorgeous saturated colors that are really um, uh, they really make the image pop off of the screen now so that's the beginnings of our looking at um, well, we've looked there at shadows, highlights and contrast, but we've also started to look into colour. So while we're on the subject of colour, let's go a bit further. Let's talk about colour temperature. I did mention that earlier, um, how all light has a different temperature. So I'm going to bring up a photograph now of my daughters. We took it in the garden a couple of days ago. Um, it was a, a bit of a dull overcast day. So what tends to happen on overcast day is that you've got these clouds that are filtering the sunshine and then the light comes through them and it's bouncing off of the blue sky and bouncing off of the clouds and you tend to get a little bit of a blue cast on the light. That's great for certain photographs, but it's not the most flattering for human skin. Um, most of us tend not to have blue skin, with the exception of, you know, maybe um, if you're particularly very, very pale. But it's not the most flattering look. So what we're going to look at here, I'm going to bring up uh, another video for you. So here's our original starting image. And you can see I'm going to crop it in again a slight bit just to get rid of that pale sky. Um, happy with that crop there. So click on done. Now you can see the there, there's a little bit bluey purpley cast to the skin tone so we're going to go down to where you can see temperature there and if we move that down you can see that gets even more pronounced if we send it the other way it gets much warmer we don't want it too warm though so we're going to come back to our starting point and just move along the line a little and just move that there until we get a more satisfying more natural color and then we're going to add a little saturation in there just to really bring the warmth of those skin tones through. Uh, and again, 
a very, very simple procedure. So that's how you correct a bit of a color cast. Um, if you look at those two images now, here's our starting image. And as I say, the girls, beautiful as they are, their skin tone is, is a little uh, peaky looking. Uh, and here's our edited version. We cropped in a little bit. We've brought that temperature round to a warmer, more natural tone, which is much more flattering, much healthier looking. And, uh, and then we've saturated it just a tiny bit, just to really kind of give it a bit of just juiciness. And uh, if you compare those two images, the chalk and cheese, it's a very simple procedure, very useful for using on portra portraiture. You always want a slightly warmer tone unless you're specifically choosing to go the other way. If you're looking for a bit of a grungy look or a kind of cyberpunky Blade Runner kind of feel, then, you know, by all means go that way. But as a general note, uh, skin tones like to be a little warmer. Okay, so that's color balance. We've talked about color saturation. Um, let's talk about no color. Let's talk about black and white. Most photographic editing apps that you'll find will have black and white filters. You just click on them and there'll be a bunch of different ones. There'll be a black and white film version, there'll be a noir version, there'll be a high contrast, there'll be a low contrast and so on. But as I say, these are all automatic. You've no control over uh, what they're going to do to your photograph because they've been based on an image that the developer of that particular filter has started with. But your image might be starting from a different place. It might be starting with much darker shadows, and much brighter highlights. So if you use those filters, you might get lucky and get the perfect look that you're after, but you're just as likely, in fact, you're more likely to not. So how do we deal with that um, with some control? Well, we use exactly the same tools that we've just been using there. So I'm going to bring up an image now, uh, another video, and here's our original photograph. So it's my daughter looking out to sea. Now we're going to crop this in. I think this is going to work really nicely. You see that little slider there? I'm just tilting that so that the horizon is straight. And we're going to crop it into a square because I think that composition sits really nicely with her sat down in the bottom corner, it really emphasizes her looking out to see. So once we're happy with that, we click done. And now we go back to our sliders and we go back to our saturation value that we were just playing with and we go the other way. We just bring it all the way down and that takes all of the color out. And now we can start playing. So I'm gonna brighten that up a good bit. Um, you have more leeway in black and white than color for playing with these contrasts. So we're going to bring up our highlights as well because we really want those uh, light patches on the C to pick up uh, and, and get really bright and sparky. And uh, we're going to brighten up the shadows a little bit as well because I don't want it to be too heavy in the bottom part of the frame. Now we're going to add in a new thing, a vignette. A vignette is where you darken the edges of the frame so that it draws the eye into the middle of the picture. So we're just going to darken it down a little bit. You don't want to go too heavy handed so it looks like you're viewing it through a, the end of a telescope. And now we're going to go on to our contrast and we can pump that up a bit higher than we would with colour. And you can see all those sparkly highlights on the sea. You can see the little highlights in the rock. It gives the rock a real texture um, and a three dimensionality. And it really accentuates the form, the softness of the subject sitting in that rigid, hard, geometric frame. So we've re really got a kind of uh, a study there in two contrasts, in, in the contrast in the hardness of the frame and the softness and the um, organic shapes of our subject. And black and white's amazing for that. Black and white, because you've no color, the eye isn't drawn by color. So form, shape, um, composition becomes really, really important in black and white. So let's have a quick look at our before and after there. So here's our original image. 
uncropped um, and then we cropped it down into a square and just tilted it slightly so that we got that straight horizon and then we put it into black and white and played with our contrast and our shadows we brought in a little bit of vi vignette just to really kind of draw the eye into the center and there it is and that's a dramatic difference and it took us what a minute a minute and a half and those are things you can play with all day long you know that's the great thing about smartphone photography uh, once you've got your app if you've paid a few quid for it fair enough you may well have got it for free and then you can just play to your heart's content and you can really start to explore and discover what it is that you're trying to express as a photographer whether it's studies in color whether it's people whether it's form and shape and composition and you know your smartphone is an incredible tool to allow you the freedom to really really explore and play and uh, and it costs you nothing it's not like the old days where you had to pay for your film and pay for your film to be developed and so on once you've got your smartphone you're off okay so we're going to do one last image um, and that's really going to be one where we just include a little bit of most of the things we've just been working on so I'm going to bring up the last video here um, it's uh, shot up in Sutton Sutton Beach we managed to get out just after the end of lockdown when before the weather had gone bad on us again and uh, just as the Sun was starting to come down I saw this uh, this lovely scene as the tide was coming in so we're just going to brighten it up a tiny bit just a little bit very subtle and we're going to bring up our shadows a tiny bit as well and uh, and our highlights we're going to brighten those again I want to pick up the light on the sea we didn't crop this one because I'm happy with that composition now I'm going to cool it down we're on that temperature again I really want the blues to come out strongly so we've just cooled that down a little bit and a bit of saturation uh, well let's do contrast first so we'll bring in the contrast there and that's brightening those highlights and darkening those darks and now we're going to saturate that we're going to bring in lots and lots of that blue and now finally we're going to go for a bit of our vignette there we go pull that down and again that really just draws the eye in so that we're following that wall out to sea almost as though we're going to step off the end just a little bit more tweak here this is the great thing you can just keep playing till you're happy so we're just going to uh, brighten those shadows up a tiny bit more so I don't lose detail in the foreground and uh, cool it down a little bit more just get a tiny bit more blueness out of the blues and there we are so again didn't take as long at all uh, and I could have kept playing around with that. You can do that. You can just keep moving your sliders around. Do be careful if you push them too far in either direction, uh, right up to 100 or down to minus 100, you find the image will start to break up uh, and it'll get grainy and you'll get noise in the shadows and it just won't look crisp and sharp. But within reason, Keep playing around and uh, moving your sliders about the place and you'll find what you're looking for. So here's our before. This is how we started. There was no crop on this image because we were happy enough with the composition. And then a couple of minutes playing around with the sliders and look what we ended up with. Boom. Ready to print and hang on the wall. So um, yeah, that just shows you how much you can do with your images. Um, as I say, both of those apps I was working with were free. Uh, they, they were um, simple and easy to work with. They have intuitive interfaces. You'll very quickly find the tools that work for you. A lot of them will have stuff that you never even look at, that doesn't occur to you uh, to play with, and that's fine. They're so powerful now, these apps, that uh, you couldn't possibly get through all of the features. But you'll very quickly find what works for you and your voice as a photographer. And as I say, once you've downloaded them, you're free to play to your heart's content. Um, and so um, you've got a few tips now for 
how to improve the photograph as you take it. And now you've got some skills there that you can take out and play with to really go to town on your images once you've produced them. You can play with light, with darkening, brightening your images, with your shadows and highlights so that you can darken down those shadows and brighten your highlights or the other way around. Adding in some contrast then to really give it pop and zing. Layering your colours in and really saturating and enriching them, changing the tones, uh, making it a different colour temperature, cropping in and out or adjusting the perspective so you can correct issues or you can actually dramatically change what your image is saying. Loads of stuff to be getting on. So I hope you get out. We've got a bit more freedom now. We can leave the house. We can play around so you can get out into the streets, into the parks, go for a walk by the sea. The most important thing is open your eyes, look around you and see what's out there. Because essentially photography is about seeing. It's about seeing the world and seeing it in a way that you haven't seen it before. So I hope you stay safe. I hope you stay well. And I hope you can take some of these tips and really enrich your photographing life. Thanks very much.